Not Everybody, we're back. Uh, locked on Bulldogs here uh, with our boy, John Garcia. He's back. We're stoked to have him. Get ready for more Cruton news as we all love it right after this. You are Locked On Bulldogs, your daily podcast on the Georgia Bulldogs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Everybody, welcome back. Locked On Bulldogs here with John Garcia Jr. John, how you doing today, brother? I'm doing well. You know, uh, not as well as uh, the Bulldogs picking up more commitments, but look, it's it's just par par for the course this day. Uh, and that's age. that's exactly right. We are getting them going. Hey, wanted to make sure everybody knew that uh, I'd like to thank LinkedIn Jobs for being the official college football recruiting sponsor across the Locked On College Network. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want. To talk to faster, post your jobs for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply. Uh, and let's talk about those incredible recruits we got going. Uh, we have a speedy, and when I say speedy, I mean speedy, Nye Carr coming in to Georgia in the next cycle. So he's not going to be on campus for a little bit, but first recruit in that class, four-star kid right now, uh, Nye Carr. Uh, give me your understanding and perception of him committing to the dogs. Well, first of all, if, if you're uber productive at Colquitt County as a sophomore, you, you got some juice. And, and there's no doubt that Carr uh, has said juice, uh, extremely productive as a sophomore, a really smooth wide receiver, kind of a guy who's built for this modern game where you're playing basketball on grass, has an understanding of not only how to run routes, but finds the holes in the zone. There's a maturity to this kid's game, but like you said at the top, he's got flat out wheels on top of it. So polish is great and, and he'll expand on that. But if you can run, you, know, you separate yourself. And, and he certainly separates from a lot of defensive backs down in South Georgia. Uh, I really like this get. Uh, again, I think he's just a kid who built for this day and age, comfortable uh, at all three levels of running the route tree, uh, really knows how to stem his route. And what I really like about watching him come off the football, he's at top speed right now. I mean, there's not a whole lot of wasted movement, a great accelerator, and then he maintains it all the way through the catch point. So there's there's obviously going to be more size added to his frame as time goes on. But I think right now he projects as a, a true space wide receiver, probably has some slot potential depending on how he fills out over the next couple of years before he gets to UGA. But on the on the floor level, a really nice get, a uh, productive kid at a big time program. I mean, that's exactly what you want when you start to recruit in state guys uh, as underclassmen. Now, when I start looking at this kid, you're right. The productivity is there. When you can compete against the best, that's that's what coaches, especially Georgia, they put a heavy, heavy emphasis on competition and being elite in those spaces. But also, you said it well, basketball on grass. And I, I joke with people from UGA all the time that want to say we're RBU. And I say, yeah, we can be RBU. But why not go get a kid? Like, you know, two things can be true, y'all. And this is the day and age where you just need to go out there and outball somebody. And, and you said two things that astound me. And I'm going to make a a comparison based upon those two things. And I'm going to see how it lands. And this is going back in Todd Munkin's system a little bit. But when we talk about, you said stem off those routes and having that route tree so beautifully, and he's at top speed right away. I remember Todd Munkin made uh, a couple of wide receivers at Oklahoma State, probably a little bit higher than they should have, right? And and coming out of Okie State, they didn't have maybe maybe his system, maybe Todd Munkin's system could make this a, a Blackman type situation, could make this some other guys like that before. Uh, what do you make of him within Todd Munkin's system? I like it. I mean, this is this is the third level threat you need in any system, right? He's a guy who could push it from the slot or the outside. So when you talk about a program like Georgia, I think we as evaluators, we get into this whole like philosophical thing where we want everybody to counter each other and all that stuff. And that's true. Like you still want to build out like, like a starting five on the basketball team. You still want to kind mm -hmm. of lock in positions based on the norm. But let's be honest, this is Georgia. You're, you're, you're going to have good quarterback play. You're going to be massive up front. You're going to have dynamic running backs and you're going to have multiple receivers 
who could stretch the field. So to me, I view this as when you get single coverage, can you win? And can you win over the top? And I think those are the the moments where Todd Monken, regardless of position, running back, receiver, certainly tight end, regardless of position, he's a matchup guy. When he finds those, he can yes. really exploit them. That's why in one game, Lad McConkey's the superstar. In the next game, it's Brock Bowers. The next game, it's James Cook. You you have to be kind of open as an offensive coordinator, as a play caller, to find those matchups and be good with it. And a, a program like Georgia, where there's talent everywhere, that's really what you're getting uh, when you talk about one-on-one -on -one ability. And that's why I love this commitment, because when yeah, he is good. in that Lad McConkey position, that might be a little bit of comp in and of itself. When he's in mm. that position, he's going to win with, with Twitch uh, and with athleticism. And he also has polish on top of it. So I think that's where the fit looks really strong for Georgia. And, and like you said, it's a heck of a way to start the 24 class. Absolutely is. And yeah, we've been trying to tell people time and time again, Daniel and I have a bet. We don't think while Todd Munkin is at UGA that anybody from UGA will ever be considered for a Heisman. And the reason being is because Todd Munkin's system predicates itself on strengths. And we, it's more like, it's more like a Belichick esque coaching philosophy. You know, we're just going to find the weak point and exploit it. And from game to game, that's going to change. So Nye, Nye comes in and, and Nye Carr has this ability to be twitchy up front or over the top. He adds this element where he can be kind of scheme proof no matter what, uh, which I really, really love. And it is quite, quite an impressive way uh, to start off that cycle. We needed some good news after some D commits. We lost a, out on a D lineman as well as an offensive linemen going to Bama and that sort of thing. So uh, this was a great, great way to get that back up coming out of the 4th of July weekend. Uh, we're going to come back and we're going to talk uh, more recruiting news, but also quarterback and just how important it is each and every year to have a quarterback in the system. But first, I'll about Rock Auto. Rock Auto is your place to go for every single car part your car will ever need, uh, whether that is interior, exterior, performance, exhaust, it's in the engine or in the cab of your car uh, or truck. Uh, you all know that I own a truck now because I said cab. Uh, Rock Auto is the place to go get it. It is reliably low prices. The best car price car part price you can find on the internet comes straight to your door. You don't have to go out. Uh, they're the most reliable. It's the one that Daniel and I trust, my co-host and I. We go there for every single thing our car will ever need. Let them know that we sent you by filling in the how did you hear about a section locked on. Let's us know uh, that we are giving them great people and let's them know that we are sending them that way. RockAuto.com. Every car part your car will ever need. All right. So I teased a little bit that uh, we lost out on Arch Manning last week, and I think people are coming to terms with it. And again, Georgia fans, don't play the sour grapes thing. Y'all went back to his playoff game in which he was like four of 17 for 49 yards or something. Don't do not do that. OK, the kid is good. Just let him be good, uh, Georgia fan. I know we lost out and it kind of stinks. But also uh, we have some big interest from some other people, and we referenced that last week. Um, so where do we stand right now? Has the week changed? Has some has the landscape as the Arch Manning news settled? Has things changed for us? Uh, who who's we're in the lead for? Who are we talking to now? Well, look, Georgia has to reshuffle the deck. I mean, you talked about it before the commercial. It's like you got to bring in quarterbacks. Georgia is like the case study of this, right? And we all remember mm. from and field and all that stuff. A lot of transition and attrition because of of some of those decisions. So naturally. Georgia knows better than anyone. You've got to always accumulate quarterback talent. And this room is big and deep right now, but it might not be uh, as early as, I guess, next spring or maybe even the fall. You, you never know how it's going to work out. So, yeah, Georgia's got to reshuffle the deck. I know they've begun reaching out to other prospects, but let's make no mistake about this. Georgia was all in on Arch. This was not a, well, we're keeping some guys warm and, and we'll see how it goes. From basically early March on, it was all about Arch. Uh, so that's a long time. Four months is a long time to to not be involved with other quarterbacks. So slowly we're hearing about Georgia starting to reach out. And, and I think luckily for UGA, there is a group of – first of all, this class is very deep. We just, we're mm. just at the Elite 11. There is a ton of quarterback talent. There, there are G5 commitments that are really, really good. Uh, and some of these committed quarterbacks are starting to take visits. And I know George has been involved with one of them, Austin Novosad, the Baylor commitment. They have established communication. Austin isn't quite sure what his schedule looks like. Of course, we're in a dead period right now, so he can't take yeah. a visit even if he wanted to. 
but he's already shown an openness to other programs. He's been committed to Baylor since last year, since December, uh, but he's visited Ohio State. He visited Texas A&M. So you understand that he's got officials left and maybe Georgia, if it offers, could pull one of those visits uh, maybe later this summer or, or during the fall when the season uh, kicks off. And then kind of the like universal riser is, is, is Jackson Small, like a kid who we have not talked yes. about at all, but he gets the call, I believe Monday, to go to the Elite 11 because Nico Iamaliava is at a volleyball tournament and he doesn't do the Elite 11. Mm -hmm. So this kid is in Iowa, packs his bags, goes to LA and rips it. He almost won the rail shot competition, which was the first night uh, where he's out throwing literally college quarterbacks. Like he out threw Caleb Williams and CJ Stroud in, in just that one little sample. Sure. So when, when you do stuff like that, everyone's like, who is this kid? He's committed to Tulane from the state of Iowa. And he basically shows up and plants his flag and then follows it up with two more really nice days. He's got a quick trigger. He's got a confidence about him uh, that that is easy to see. And yeah, he started to, to hear a bunch of scholarships come in his way. Cal offered him. LSU is mm -hmm. talking to him. We believe Georgia is one of the schools that has begun to initiate conversation. And a couple other schools, he actually told me that have current commitments are talking to him and he didn't want to name them. So he's like being really Ooh. careful with this situation. He is committed to Tulane. He recently committed to Tulane. So they're going to get the benefit of the doubt. But I think a lot of people, as time goes on, see him as a potential flip candidate just because he has elevated his profile in a very short um, amount of time. Uh, and I think a lot of people are going back to his 2021 tape and really seeing what he's all about. So my point is there are committed prospects that are out there that Georgia can continue to build with. And you could almost kind of take a step back and be selective with it. I don't think you've got mm -hmm. to go all in on one. I think you could, because that's what, what what had happened with Arch. I think now you can cast a wider net and now you could talk to two, three, four quarterbacks and kind of see where things stand. And I think the benefit of that for Georgia is you're Georgia. You're coming off of a national title. You can swoop in late. You know, if, if you're, I don't know, if you're LSU, let's say, because, you know, we know they're mm -hmm. involved in college, you're, you're a new coaching staff. There's there's no benefit of the doubt right now. Georgia has all the benefit of the doubt. You can go almost November and start making phone calls and probably flip a good prospect. We know there's a lot of great quarterbacks in the state of Georgia. Um, a couple were over there at the Elite 11 as well. And I think just in the region, you know, to, to take away from Nova Sod and Smolik, just in the region, you know, Emory Williams committed to Miami. And then they took Jaden Rashada. So there's certainly a connotation that he's QB2 for them. You wonder if Georgia and other schools start to communicate that. I know Florida, Florida State have, have been in with him recently. Uh, Malachi Singleton, in-state kid, right? Atlanta area guy, North Cobb High School. Had a great run. Finished number six for us at the Elite 11. Mm. He's not the flashiest kid, but man, he is a winner. Can spin the football at the short to intermediate levels. And he's a tough SOB who can run the football about as well as, as any of these other quarterbacks in this class. So you, you start to expand the board and you're like, man, this is a great year, even if you got to go flip a kid. And we all know Georgia, with its pedigree, can do so even at the 11th hour. So I do think Georgia will figure it out in this class. I just don't know which guy it will be, but there's there's a lot of options. Uh, so much I hear from that one. We need guys. We need a quarterback. Like that's, that's the one thing I hear. Don't think to yourself, Georgia fan. Oh, don't worry. No, 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 no. We've been there before. I don't want a quarterback room that holds holes in it, guys. I'm not playing that game. The second thing I hear is buckle in because it's going to be wild. And yeah, I was going to make that point that yes, Arch was in the driver's seat for his recruitment and we were all in. He was the driver on it, right? Well, now all of a sudden Georgia turns driver and we do get to turn back and we just get to throw it out there. And all of a sudden a kid who is at a two lane of Baylor and Baylor is a good school, by the way, Daniel has them as maybe a potential dark horse for playoff coming in because of everything that's going on. They're a good, they're a very well coached team. Aranda's doing some great stuff. So I, I get that. But at the same point or same, same time. Uh, yeah. Georgia has some cachet. Georgia is the, you know, point to that trophy point to Kirby point to some guys in the league and say, Hey, y'all want to come play for that. And all of a sudden these four star guys, three star guys, 
who maybe, you know, a little Stetson esque that were looked down upon because we've been there with the Trenton Thompsons, with the with the Justin Fields, the highest of high profile five stars that haven't panned out for us. You know, we take Jordan Davis, he becomes the three star that becomes all world instead of Trenton Thompson. Uh, same thing with with Stetson and Justin and all that. All of a sudden, we get a kid with some I hate using this term, but I just, some moxie, some some prove it to me <laughs> ability, right from Iowa, who just says, "Screw it, I'm going to be out here slinging it." Ooh, that gets very interesting. And so, yeah, buckle in. It is going to be wild, and we don't know who, but I I trust that we'll get a quarterback into the system that that is going to be just right for us. I I like that a lot. Uh, we're going to come back right after this and let you know who we think or John thinks is going to be maybe a star at UGA in the coming years. Uh, but before you do that, I wanted to lo- let you know about Built Bar. Built Bar is the tastiest protein bar on planet Earth. How do I know? I've tried them. I've tasted them. They are delicious. They are like a candy bar. And when I say like a candy bar, I mean the taste but nothing else of a candy bar. It is low in sugar. It is high in fiber. It is high in protein. It's post-workout, pre-workout, on-the-go meal replacement in the middle of the workout so you don't have to be that guy at the gym doing the protein powder shake very, very loud as he has his headphones and he can't hear how loud it is. Don't be that. Uh, Just go get... The Built Bar. Uh, it is fantastic. We've tried them all. There is this new flavor pack every single season, spring, fall, winter. Uh, they come out with something. It's incredible. Uh, they're our favorite place. BuiltBar.com. Let them know we sent you by putting in Locked On 15 into the promo code and you get 15% off your entire order. That's Locked On 15 for 15% off your entire order at BuiltBar.com. All right, last question for you, John, before we get out of here, and that's this. Uh, so far, who has said we're coming to UGA, and I know we got flips coming and we got decommits and all of that. I, I understand that. But right now, I keep on seeing these lists, and right now, like the DB class for us is otherworldly, in my understanding, coming in. We got uh, Nye Carr, who I'm very high on. You're very high on a couple DB guys. Last week, we talked about the highest floor DB maybe possible coming into Georgia. I love this. Uh, we also have a Christian Miller and we have a couple of edge guys at UGA, a couple of interiors as well as running backs. Who do you anticipate being a star, a stud at UGA from this class or in, in future classes uh, so far? Who do you see that as? Yeah, I think separating it into a couple of categories makes sense. I know we talked at length about AJ Harris as the highest floor among these mm. DBs. You know, I think, Daniel Harris maybe has the highest ceiling, right? Then one of the newer commitments com- committed July one over Ohio State, by the way, which is you know a big deal in the DB world, uh, certainly. Um, and you start to think of these DBs that Georgia's accumulated. They all were like either locked in on another school, committed to another school, or like, man, they're for sure going there. AJ Harris was a lock to Ohio State in the fall. And then in the spring, Florida certainly felt good. Um, I think Daniel Harris with his brother at AM, that was something early on mm-hmm. in Miami tried to keep him home. Obviously, Justin Rett was was committed to Notre Dame. So I think that's first of all a you know a good prelude to hey, there's gonna be more of these kind of situations with these other positions. But I think Harris has the highest floor in the class. I think he's ready to go today. But I think when you go to ceiling, man, this thing can go anywhere, right? I, I think a Pierce Sperling is a, a unicorn type of wide receiver, jumbo tight end hybrid sort of thing that we're just sort of discovering in the evaluation world, right? Where where do we put this guy? 6'6", like 225, but he's running legitimate routes. He's super productive, great, great ball skills. I think when he was like a freshman, he had this like one headed catch at a camp. And I was like the first time I met him and he was like, yeah, I'm going to Georgia. I'm like, oh, wow, already? Yeah. And that's how early on he was on board. So I think his catch radius and production level is, is kind of untapped and unseen right now in, in this day and age. But how about Bo Hughley? I, I think he's so intriguing because he's, first of all, massive. You see him in person, six, seven, Huge. six, eight, 300 pounds. You're just like, I can't believe this kid's in high school. But then you look deeper into it, career D lineman who just recently moved over. So he's already making plays as an O lineman in Atlanta against He's at Langston Hughes against great competition, but he's never really done it. So I'm so curious to see his development as an offensive tackle type on that side of the ball because he is a defensive lineman by trade and kind of by nature. Like he plays O-line like you would think a D-lineman would play it. So as he becomes more mature and patient and technical, I think mm-hmm. this kid's ceiling uh, as, as a right tackle or maybe a left tackle, depending on how, how he fills out, 
could be through the roof. I think he could end up as the gem of this class. We just don't see it right now because he's so big and physical and, and kind of put into that, that D-line box. But really, it's untapped potential on the O-line. So curious to see him as a senior. And then when, once he gets to UGA, how he develops. Because I think his ceiling could stretch out to be you know as, as, as big as anyone in this class. Uh, yeah, you know, you got Andrew Thomas on one side, Isaiah Wilson on the other, and you're talking, I mean, it could go either way how coaching goes, because Isaiah right. was a, a just giant man that, you know, eye-popping numbers like that, and and every single time we got asked on on draft stuff, we're like, no, 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 Andrew Thomas is your guy. We like Isaiah, but but not as, come on, come over here. This is the true. And so maybe that finesse, maybe that skill set to get into it. But yeah, when you have that big of a body coming in and have a year to try to acclimate, then you get on a college campus and all of a sudden, Hey, if you're, if you're in the likelihood of a, a Ben Cleveland, right? Nasty dude who just road grades and that's your interior and all of a sudden you get kicked into guard and you have that D lineman mentality. That's not a bad spot to be in. Ben's doing just fine on the Ravens, and and maybe that's a trajectory. Uh, and I love steals like that. Again, Kirby is is always looking. Uh, it's to me, he goes after four or five star, but in the same mentality, he doesn't really care about those stars. Uh, he's he's said so so many times. Like, yeah, of course, people are going to recognize greatness, but at the same token, we have our own evaluation process. And if Bo's that type of kid, okay. And yes, yeah, Sperlin, my gosh. Uh, uh, there's this there's this understanding. Brock Bowers has just ruined all of us. Every single dog fan is <laughs> ruined by Brock, Brock Bowers. And all of a sudden, we got Eric Gilbert. We got big O Darnell Washington. All of a sudden, you had Sperlin. And, and, and now we don't know what to do. We have no concept because this kid, we think he's going to see the field. We saw him like, you know, we, we saw G-Day type stuff um, where all of a sudden you're like, okay, this this tight end room is legit unbelievable. Uh, and they're all going to press for time. So that ceiling, ooh, a lot, a lot of stuff. Uh, everybody, this is John Garcia Jr. He is over at SI. He's doing recruiting stuff. He's head of recruiting over there. You see his Twitter handle, John Garcia underscore Jr. Go follow him. Let him know he sent you. He is a fantastic listen to. And on Twitter, you need to go uh, watch him, follow him. And he's always going to have news for us. John, thank you so much for joining us, brother. Thanks so much for having me. Appreciate it. All right, guys, we'll be back later this week. Daniel will be back. We'll be talking more stuff. Locked on Bulldogs, your team every day. See you guys then.